Welcome to Warhammer War Scroll Review. In this video, we won't focus on a single War Scroll, but an entire faction the Death Army, Nighthawk. War Scroll Review <coughs> Faction Focus The Nighthawk faction is a part of the Death Grand Alliance. It offers players mobility and durability, with a bit of offensive potential as well. Night Haunt share the same battle trait with Death. Deathless Spirits offers Night Haunt units a chance to ignore a wound or mortal wound on a 6 up when they are within 6 inches of a Night Haunt hero. This is a decent ability, but don't go too far out of your way to ensure all the models are benefiting from it. If a unit is better off leaving the aura's reach to go grab an objective or to go fight a unit, then do it. Likewise, purchasing multiple characters to grant this aura is unnecessary. Getting one or two heroes to give Deathless Spirits to the main force is fine, but don't worry about covering the whole army. The second battle trait for Night Haunt is called Ethereal Ruler. This is the main benefit to taking a Night Haunt faction. When setting up a unit, the Death player can declare they are putting it in reserves off the table. In a following Night Haunt movement phase, as long as there is a Wraith or Banshee on the table, the unit can deploy 9 inches away from the enemy on a roll of 3 up. This offers the player a lot of versatility. This can be used to deal damage, but it is also about grabbing objectives and board control. Dropping almost 2,000 points on a shooting army can be extremely effective. Even putting one Cairn Wraith or a unit of Spirit Host in reserves to grab objectives can be worthwhile. In any case, don't bank too much on rolling that 3 up in a single turn. Waiting until a last turn to drop can be beneficial, but relies too much on a single die roll. Any 40k player that played 7th edition will tell you, that 3-up does not guarantee your unit when you want it. Another thing to note is that since this happens in your movement phase, you won't be able to cast any spells on these models. The other piece of the Night Haunt battle trait is Conduit of Ethereal Power. This rule allows the Black Coach to count Tomb Banshees and Cairn Wraiths for the Evocation of Death rule that powers up the Coach. This isn't really a good ability, but makes the Coach usable in a Night Haunt force? Night Haunt only has 6 units and can draw from 2 factions for allies, keeping their options quite low. Their units are the Black Coach, Cairn Wraith, Tomb Banshee, Hex Wraiths, Spirit Hosts, and Mourn Goals. All of these units have War Scroll reviews on the channel. So, please check them out for more specific details on how to use the units. Among their war scrolls, there are three leaders, two battle line, and one behemoth. The Cairn Wraith and Tomb Banshee are pretty similar. The two are cheap hero options. Probably the better choice in most cases, as the black coach is twice their points and not much better. As lame as it may sound, most of the time, a Cairn Wraith hiding in the back of your deployment zone is the best general to choose. Keep the Wraith out of line of sight, and the enemy will have a hard time killing it without devoting too many resources to it. A Night Haunt player might have a couple Banshees in addition to this to give off Deathless Spirits and deal some damage. As stated before, Deathless Spirits probably shouldn't be relied on or invested in, so if the Death player is getting additional characters, Banshees are probably the better choice to deal damage with their screen. In many cases, one of the command traits specifically is going to outperform the others, but let's take a look at them all. Hatred of the Living and Pitiless Executioner both enhance the general's abilities in combat, but that is probably a dangerous place to put your knife on here. Lingering Spirit and Cloaked in Shadow are slightly better, being that they enhance the character's defensive abilities, adding one to wound and one to save, respectively. Terrifying Entity may be a good choice when taking multiple Banshees. This command trait would decrease bravery by one of enemy units within 6 inches. Not only is this bad for battle shock tests for the enemy, a few Banshee Howes are bound to do some damage. If the Night Haunt player is using the Ethereal Ruler's Allegiance ability, then Ruler of the Spirit Host is likely the best option. The trait allows the Night Haunt player to re-roll the roll for Ethereal Rulers. This is why making the General a Wraith and hiding them in the back is a good option. The Night Haunt player can easily start with nothing on the board but General Karen Wraith. Remember, if there are no Banshees or Wraiths on the table, no reserves are deploying, so the units can be lost. Most Night Haunt artifacts are also dominated by one or two of their peers. Cloak of the Waxing Moon, Dreadbolt Ring, 
and Covetous Familiar are all fairly boring. The cloak makes the hero a bit more durable, and the other two deal a couple mortal wounds. Midnight Tome is a welcome addition in that it makes the bearer become a wizard. They can bind and unbind one spell and no mystic shield and arcane bolt. Without going into allies, this is the only way to use magic in a night haunt force. Light Shard of the Harvest Moon is a fairly potent artifact. Once per game, it can be used to allow all night haunt units within 6 inches to reroll to hit rolls in the combat phase. Paired with Spirit Hosts and Mourn Goals, this can potentially be a pretty powerful ability. The other artifact that outshines many of the others in many situations is the Pendant of the Fell Wind. This artifact adds 3 to the movement value of Night Haunt units within 6 inches of the bear. This gets the Spirit Hosts, Banshees, and Wraiths moving 9 to 15 inches, and the Morngulls and Hex Wraiths moving 15 to 21 inches. Between this and Ethereal Rulers, the Night Haunt player will have a good control of the movement phase. Obviously, they all have fly keyword, making this army extremely mobile. Hex Wraiths and Spirit Hosts serve as battle line for a Night Haunt faction. Spirit Hosts are really their main unit to fill this role. They are cheaper and more durable than the Hex Wraiths. In a lot of cases, they are also going to be doing more damage. The Hex Wraiths do have superior movement, but with Ethereal Rulers, the movement is less of an advantage. Any Night Haunt unit can deploy wherever on the table making speed not as important. A maxed out unit of spirit hosts with mystic shield and deathless spirits will be around for a while. Spirit hosts are great at battles of attrition and are the main anchor of the Night Haunt force. On top of that, the damage they do is mortal wounds, so it is effective against all types of enemies. The Morngull is the other unit Night Haunt have access to. This model took a bit of a hit with its update, but it is still viable. In a Night Haunt faction, it is the best damage dealer they have. Starting at 8 attacks and 2 damage is pretty powerful and can do 16 wounds. Its minus 1 to hit aura is still extremely potent and will keep the ghosts around longer. All the models listed, other than the Black Coach, are ethereal, meaning they can fly and ignore Rend when taking their save. Ignoring Rend with a 4 up save or better is pretty durable. This, with Fly, and their decent movement values will keep the units in a Night Haunt faction safe through a combination of hiding and taking select damage. A Night Haunt army can pull from two factions for allies, Soul Blight and Death Lords. Soul Blight offers a cheap wizard with the Vampire Lord, another minus one to hit reduction, in this case for shooting with the Bat Swarm, and a bit of cheekiness in the Coven Throne. The Coven Throne has a spell that might come in handy. Combined with a Banshee with Terrifying Entity Command Trait, the Coven Throne's Beguile spell would be even more potent. Locking a unit in combat with the Coven Throne while Banshees scream at it can be a decent combination. Even without the Banshee's scream, the Coven Throne could just occupy it and keep a big nasty model from dealing damage. For more details on how to use the Coven Throne, check out its War Scroll view. It's a pretty unique model. A unit of Blood Knights is also not a bad choice, and they actually fit just perfectly with a Vampire Lord as allies to a 2000 point Night Haunt force. Night Lords, Death Haunt's other ally, have a couple units to offer. Archon can be used if the Night Haunt player wants to summon for some reason. Neferata has a spell that makes her ethereal, and Morgast Harbingers are actually one of the few models that are worth summoning. Their 3d6 charge makes it much more likely that they will be able to charge the turn they come in. These can be used in tandem with the rest of the army deploying through ethereal rulers. In the end, the best ally is probably just a simple vampire lord for the extra magical capabilities. With the midnight tome, or with a wizard ally like the vampire lord, the night haunt player can summon models. Summoning is not extremely popular as it doesn't offer many advantages. In a night haunt faction, it would seem all but pointless with the existence of ethereal rulers, but it can be put to use. Night Haunt's main problem is lack of options. One option it lacks is good shaft models. Spirit hosts are pretty expensive to fill this role, but they do work in a pinch. Summoning gives the player the ability to use zombies, 
as summoned units aren't confined to the Allegiance's keyword. As mentioned previously, Morgas Harbingers are also sometimes worth being summoned, so there are a couple reasons to leave a few points for summoning. There are a few main strategies to use with the Nighthawn faction. The first to mention is based on capitalizing on the Ethereal Ruler's ability. The Nighthawn player can choose just a couple units to set up in the Ethereal Rulers, with the intention of grabbing a couple objectives or trying to kill a support character in the opponent's backlines. With this playstyle, the Nighthawk player is likely relying on their mobility to stay safe as they advance or hold objectives. In this force, a hero with the Pendant of the Fell Wind would increase their mobility significantly. With a Wraith bestowed with Ruler of the Spirit Host, the army can be placed in reserves to later drop as much of the army as possible in a single turn. When using this strategy, some units can try for a charge that turn, but don't rely on it. 9 inches is not statistically likely. Since there are very few auras for the ghosts to worry about, the army can be placed separately to surround an opponent or saturate them with targets. When equipping a hero with Light Shard of the Harvest Moon, it may be a good idea to deploy the army all together, or at least with conga lines back to the bearer. It also might be better to not try any charges with this clump the turn they come down. The Nighthawk player can allow the enemy to come to them or move the whole force at once towards the enemy to ensure as many charges as possible have the bonus of the Light Shard. Another thing to note is first turn is not always going to be the best time to bring the force down. Sometimes patience will be rewarded. Using some of the army to separate the opponent's force the first couple turns can have its benefits. In an army relying on doing a lot of damage in one turn with this artifact, Morngols and Spirit Hosts are the best options. Keep the Wraith or Banshee that has the item out of line of sight and surround the other ghosts around that. Both models benefit greatly from boosting their hit rolls. For Spirit Hosts, that's the only way they deal damage, as they deal mortal wounds on 6s to hit. On 6s to hit with Morngols, that attack would deal 3 damage. Either of these strategies can be used with the same army from game to game, as the command traits and artifacts can be changed. So when facing a shooty army, the Nighthawk player can drop in their face and wreak havoc with the Light Shard. When facing a combat heavy army that is likely going to evaporate the ghosts, they can separate themselves and act more mobile with the Pendant. Using the tactics touched on in this video, we'll apply it to build two lists. These aren't necessarily the best lists. They are more written to showcase some of the synergies at the army's disposal. In the first army list, we are going to focus on the Ethereal Ruler's special ability. This army is really straightforward. Two Wraiths, two Morngols, and three units of nine Spirit Hosts. One Wraith has Ruler of the Spirit Hosts to reroll Ethereal Rulers, which is good because this whole army will be setting up in reserves. If needed, a Spirit Host unit may be left to protect the Wraith. The other Wraith has Light Shard of the Harvest Moon. On a later turn, the intention would be to drop as many of the units as possible close together, facing the opponent's weakest angle. Alternatively, they can be placed wherever is easiest to protect them. A Morngul or two may want to charge out of the pack to engage the enemy the turn they come in, but it's best to save most of the attacks for next turn. This way, the Nighthawk player can get positioned better in the movement phase. Going second is a plus for this army, because of the chance to get a double turn. Make sure to string the Spirit Hosts out to engage what they need to, while still gaining the buff from the Light Shard. 27 Spirit Hosts is pretty formidable, especially when they are rerolling the hits. A Spirit Host can statistically deal one mortal wound a combat phase, but with rerolls to hit, that amount goes to about 1.5. This seems like a small difference, but multiplied by up to 27 models means a lot of damage being dealt. Against a shooting army, try to hide the Light Shard out of line of sight. If it's hard to protect the Wraith for a turn to be able to trigger the Light Shard, it may be best to deploy the army in one turn, then deploy the Wraith with the Light Shard in the following turn to activate the aura. Against some armies, this tactic will have little effect. Armies that are spread out can leave the Nighthawk force without any good targets. Some combat armies are also going to outdo the ghosts in combat and not worry about their initial drop. And then some armies are going to be just too durable for the main strike to do any damage. 
Another situation could leave the wraith with the ruler's spirit host without any place to hide. In any of these cases, where the light shard drop tactic may be ineffective, it may be best to deploy normally, or at least not with the intention to drop at once. Switching the light shard to a pendant of the fell wind is an option and can be handy. The second army we'll cover is based on being mobile and durable. It includes four tomb banshees, two mourn goals, three units of spirit hosts, one unit of nine, and two units of three. As allies, this army also includes a coven throne. The Banshee General is a terrifying entity, bringing the opponent's bravery down by one and increasing the effectiveness of the Coven Throne's Beguile spell. The intention is for the Coven Throne to lock up a big and powerful unit while the Banshees stand around and scream at it with its reduced bravery. The Morgulls can take on anything else tough, while the Spirit Hosts crowd control where needed. The Banshee with the Pendant can stick around the other Banshees or go off with one of the melee units. This army would have pretty good board control since they are fast and can spread out. On the other side of the table, when fighting a Nighthaunt force, be sure to keep your important models shielded and don't allow the ghost to set up right next to a weak support character. Remember that Rend doesn't matter and just hit them with volume of attacks. The Ethereal Ruler's special rule only works while there are wraiths and banshees on the table, so if those are killed before the drops come down, they will be put on their back foot. Faction Focus will break down the armies into categories to rate them. Offensive capabilities, defensive capabilities, versatility, board control, and synergy. Nighthaunt's offensive capabilities are somewhat lacking. The Morngul is the only real source of damage they have. Spirit Host can deal some damage through mortal wounds, but it's unreliable. The faction's defensive capabilities are strong, with army-wide ignore rend and the ability to completely avoid being attacked while in reserves. Board control is another area Nighthaunt shines. Ethereal rulers, army-wide fly special rule, and decent movement make the ghosts able to grab multiple objectives a turn and spread out all over the board if necessary. Versatility would be a decent point on Nighthaunt if they had more unit options. Ethereal rulers does allow a lot of flexibility in playstyle and allows the Nighthaunt player to change their whole strategy from game to game. Synergy is the area Nighthaunt lacks in the most. There are only a handful of abilities that augment the spirits, and none of which are that great. All combined, the Nighthaunt faction receives a 3 out of 5. What do you think of the Nighthaunt faction? What do you think of the first faction focus? Can you think of anything else you'd like to see in these videos? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.